Good evening. This is the night that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. my lips, make haste, O God, to deliver me, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Luke, the first chapter. In those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, to the town in Judea, in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has gathered the proud, scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Be Our second reading is from the book of Micah, the fifth chapter. <clears throat> but you, O oh Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she is, who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall give them their peace. O oh Lord, have mercy on us.
the holy name of Jesus, amen. Family members often resemble one another, but not always. Matter of fact, I look more like my buddy Carlos Serrato than any of my siblings. One time I went to a birthday party and someone said to Kristen, your husband is amazing. He preaches on Sunday and he did my wrist on Wednesday. <laughs> also, uh, Kristen looks so much like her sister-in-law that everyone is convinced they are sisters, not in-laws. And in adoptive families, children might not look necessarily like their mom or dad or their foster parents. But even if there isn't that family resemblance, there are just as much a part of the family and just as much loved. When my kids were born, we used to always joke and say, we're 100% positive Joe's the dad, but we're not sure Kristen is the mom. <laughs> or maybe you've heard the term doppelganger. A doppelganger is a mysterious, exact double of a living person. It's a German word that literally translates to double walker or double goer. A doppelganger isn't someone who just looks like you, but is an exact double. A friend or even a close relative who encounters a doppelganger will insist it was you even though you can prove you were not in that location when your double was sighted. So who in your family do you look like? Is there a family resemblance that spans the generations? Maybe you've got your dad's eyes or your mom's nose. Or maybe you've got grandma's ears and great grandpa's colic in your hair. Family life is the theme for our preaching series this midweek Advent services. And tonight we'll focus on Jesus' words in the gospel lesson under this theme, Who do you resemble? In our text for tonight, we see two relatives, Mary and her cousin Elizabeth. Both women saw, hidden within their particular situation, a deeper meaning to a new life. Each one trusted that God of the impossible was somehow in their circumstances reshaping, transforming, and fulfilling their very existence. That's why Elizabeth says, Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. I sometimes wonder, do you think John looked like his cousin Jesus or if Mary resembled her cousin Elizabeth? Who do you look like? Who do you resemble? And I'm not just talking about your physical appearance but who do you resemble as who you are? You as a person. People in the same family can closely resemble one another, but they can be worlds apart in spirit and temperament and attitude. It's what's here in your heart that will overflow into what you say and do. So let me ask you this night. Who do you resemble? Do you look like Jesus? Do your words and actions resemble what Jesus would say and what Jesus would do? Do people see him through you? I dare say that both Mary and Elizabeth resembled Jesus. Maybe or maybe not in physical appearance. But they both lived a life that reflected the love of Christ and what they said, did, and believed. Neither one should or could be pregnant. One is too old, one is too young, one is barren, one is a virgin, yet both, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, are pregnant. Neither Elizabeth nor Mary allowed the circumstances of their family or their life or their lowly family heritage to define who they were or limit who they might be. Believing for them is not so much about what they see with their eyes, but how they see and who they resemble. 
Each one believed that her circumstance was more than just her life. Elizabeth believed she was more than just a barren, childless old woman. Mary refused to accept that she was a no one, an outcast, another scandalous woman in the community, but she believed that she would be the mother of the Holy One. So if Jesus is the head of the body, which is the church, then by his grace alone, you and I are members of his holy body. We, that's right, you and I, are the hands and feet and the mouthpiece of Jesus that have been called to bring the good news of Jesus to a hurting world and a hurting community. This is our Advent calling as we wait and watch for the coming of the Lord, joining Jesus on his mission. His mission isn't just another program or the next new shiny thing we need to sign up for. But it's what the body of Christ does wherever we go, whatever you do. May you resemble Christ. It's our mission, our calling in Christ, that we may, through the work of the Holy Spirit, live and resemble a Jesus kind of a life. You are to live your life like Jesus, so that people may see and know Jesus through you. So here's your one takeaway. In the midst of this busy season, when we're tugged in so many different directions and trying to do so many things, let's not lose sight of the one who is at the heart of it all, Jesus. With Christ at the center, let us not lose sight of the people around us who are anxiously waiting to see Jesus. They're looking to see if you and I as Christians will look and act like him. May the Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave us himself, bless us with a life that resembles his. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to light the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For your holy Christian church, O Almighty Father, especially the persecuted Christians in China, Ethiopia, India, Iraq, and throughout the world, and for the Lutheran Church Hong Kong Synod, Lord, in your mercy, For all pastors, O good shepherd, especially Matthew, our synod's president, Timothy, our district president, Mark, our circuit visitor, Josman, our pastor, and for all those who serve your church, that in all things they speak the truth and love and be faithful in their witness. Lord, in your mercy, for those in need of your healing touch, O great physician, especially for Paula, Ken, Ina, Jose, June, Benton, Judy, Jerry, and Lisa, Antonio, Thomas, Carver, Ken, Mason, Jolene, Tim, Ruby, Francis, Philip, Carol, Jillian, and Mary. 
and all those that we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, for those who celebrate the gift of life, O Creator blessed, especially Thomas, Michelle, Linda, Sandra May, David, and Cole, Lord, in your mercy, for those who celebrate the gift of baptism, O Triune God, especially Alyssa, Briar, Lynn, Jay, Ashlyn, Jacelyn, Mabry, Mikkel, and Doris. We ask that you would keep us all in our baptismal grace unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. For all families, O giver of every good gift, especially for Judy and Jerry, Roger, for Scott and Valerie, and for Stephen. We ask that in all that we do, we would resemble you. Lord, in your mercy. For those who celebrate the gift of marriage, O heavenly bridegroom, especially for Gary and Judy, Carl and Teresa, Lord, in your mercy. For those who mourn, O firstborn of the dead, especially be with the family and friends of Madeline. Give us comfort and peace in the things that we cannot understand and in the hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsel, and all just works, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.